So guys, we're finally showered and ready. We are on our way to Osu Castle because Almina is really far away from here. I think it's in Cape Coast. Is it in Cape Coast? Yeah. Guys, it is editing jammin' here, and as I was going over the footage, I was so sad because most of the audio, if not all of it, was compromised or just not there. But I'm just gonna take this time to tell you a little bit about where we are. So you can see right now we're in Osu Castle, and you can see the ocean next to it. It just actually surrounds the whole castle, and that is the Atlantic Ocean. Now this is really important and links to my first point, which is that historically Osu Castle has a really tragic past in that it played a significant role in the transatlantic slave trade because it was one of, if not the most important slave forts in the entire coast of West Africa. Slaves were held in the dungeons below the castle before being shipped to the Americas. It wasn't originally built for that purpose, or at least the site it was built on was not originally for that purpose, but it was built by the Danish in the 17th century but it was a former lodge that was operated by a Swedish trader who did not trade slaves as far as I'm aware of. The castle served multiple purposes, including as a seat of government and the residence of one of the former presidents of Ghana up until 2013, I think. That is my bird, <laughs> very loud, oh my gosh. Stop it. Okay, so after Ghana gained independence in 1957, Osu Castle was used in various governmental capacities. Um, it served as the office of the president, like I said, uh, but today it's used for government functions as well as a historical site that attracts tourists who are interested in learning more about history. So as I mentioned already, the dungeons at Osu Castle were used during the transatlantic slave trade to house slaves uh, temporarily until they would make the voyage over to the Americas. And the dungeons were constructed with thick stone walls, very few windows, as you're gonna see um, shortly, or openings, and it was designed to keep everything in, preventing any escape or limiting external contact. So, in terms of ventilation and lighting, they were slim to none. Extremely poor, they had small openings or slits which served as the only sources of fresh air and light. And guys, I don't know what it smells like currently, but during my journey there, you could smell a very, very putrid sort of smell. Have to use like cloth or something to cover your nose. Very little ventilation. And if you imagine the amount of slaves that would have been packed together, the number of people typically held there, it's outstanding. So this led to very stifling conditions, which contributed to the spread of diseases, which made the dungeons very notoriously inhumane. Now, I don't remember every single thing, but I believe the guide said that there was a tunnel underneath this um, well, underground, that connected the dungeons to another part of town in Accra, which is where the slaves would be, like, smuggled underneath. Um, in terms of the capacity, as you can see, it is quite spacious, so it was designed to hold a large number of slaves, exceeding any kind of human capacity. The overcrowding was intentional, which is just reflective of the economic view of slaves as commodity at this time. It was a simple layout just designed to keep people in. In terms of the conditions, as I said, the conditions were dire. Lack of sanitation facilities, inadequate space, which meant that the slaves who were here suffered immensely. And one thing that I remembered from being down here is I actually saw a handprint on the walls and I asked if it was recent. No one really responded to me, but we can only kind of surmise that it is 
not recent, along with many of the other things. There's probably someone trying to get out. But the floors were just bare rock. No provisions for any kind of bedding or comfort. After we saw the dungeons, we made our way to the gardens, which is where we are now. And you can see there's a variety of flowering plants. Right now I'm looking at what appears to be some sort of like berry tree. There's beautiful palms, banana trees, etc, etc. But these gardens also have a dark history, which I'm about to tell you about now. So the British actually bought Osu Castle from the Danes in 1850, and that is when they established the gardens. <laughs> This was in 1876, after an earthquake, which happened in Accra in around 1862. So this is when the Gold Coast became a crown colony and the castle became the seat of the colonial government, which were the British at that time. So the gardens were created in front of the former Danish slave fort in an area that was previously inhabited by the indigenous Ga people of Ghana and it has a variety of trees, flowering plants, and herbs from around the world, which are all labeled. And I think at one point we went to look at the calabash tree, but there's so many plants there. It's honestly very beautiful, the garden itself. But the indigenous Ga inhabitants were expelled from their land by the British after their homes were destroyed by the earthquake, like I said, which made way for the gardens and this was later used by missionaries to host children during their celebration of the Festival of Flowers. And then as time went on, the gardens were used for like political uses as well as festival uses. But as I said, there's so much vegetation on the land. You have tamarind trees, banana trees, calabash trees, and there's a beautiful canopy actually that provides shades from the sun between the castle and the plantation at Koku Hill. But I'm gonna leave it there. This would not be a vlog if something stupid did not happen at least once. I made like a huge list. I did so much research on what we needed to get for backpacking through like tropical destinations. And one of the things was mosquito stuff for your skin. like mosquito spray or like ointments to basically keep the mosquitoes away so I'm there like spraying my legs like shh, shh. I start spraying it and then all like all of a sudden obviously I start coughing as well I'm like eh, eh. my nose feels like it's on fire I'm like wait mosquito ointment is not supposed to smell like this like for your skin so I read the back and it's like extremely hazardous and I'm like why would anyone make a mosquito ointment for your skin that's like hazardous for your skin and I'm getting like really annoyed and then obviously I keep reading and it's for the room so I've put like room mosquito spray on my entire body it was so irritating